Okay, I need your help. There's something missing in fabric, and only you can help us bring it together, all right? And that's the ability to scale up automatically above and beyond what bursting and smoothing allows us to do. Um, it's something that's currently not there. There's some, like, auto-scale capabilities with Spark, but... <sighs> Uh, let's, let's dive into it. All right, so do the whole YouTube thing, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and become a member for as little as $5 a month. You can get early access to all this content. Wait, change it up. Okay, so why are we, why, why, why are we talking about this? Why are we here? Well, really, this comes down to, you know, we've got, we've got reliable large chunks of time or like defined chunks of time where we have a reliable need for more compute around month end, quarter end or year end, right? Like we, we can predict them. We know that they, these things arise. We know when they hit, uh, some of you, it's on a very specific day. It's the third day of the month or fifth day of the month or whatever it is, right? We, we know that we need to have that. And this is going to exceed, what the capacity usage is for like the rest of the month, right? I mean, at least in some cases, right? Some places not, but like a lot of places, this is a big challenge that we deal with, right? And what we really need here, wait, we had why? So yeah, what? What are we looking for? We need the CUs and the capabilities to automatically just meet the demands that we have for our broad consumers. Right, and this isn't individual feature functionalities. You know, like we need the CUs to be available for you know various workloads that we can run and operate during that period of time. Right? If we look at who does this impact, I mean, the first thing that jumps to mind clearly was data engineers, right? Like that's why we got the Spark Auto Scale, but. I mean, Spark's only a small component of it. Like, there's a lot of workloads there in in a data warehouse, and there's a lot of workloads in data pipelines, and a lot of workloads in uh, inside of uh, fabric databases. We can reliable predict re reliably predict that our data engineering teams are going to broadly need these capabilities all across the service, not just in one tiny engine. Um, we're going to need that. Our analysts are going to need it too, right? Like we're going to see these large spikes in like semantic model processing, right? Like if, even if you do incremental loads, the time where people do like full refreshes to, you know, catch any potential issues or historical updates or whatnot, that's often around month end. You know, you're like, ah, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, we got to ref we got to do a full refresh. Like that's something that happens, right? Um, uh, but also, People are going to start, you know, our report consumers, and we'll get to them in just a second, people are going to start to notice things around these big spikes in time where they're going to say, that number's not right. Hey, analyst, go figure this out. And so that analyst is going to hop into Power BI or maybe T-SQL or Python, and they're going to start to do some digging and research, right, where they might be running lots of really ugly queries because they haven't written the query before. It's not optimized for run, right? They're going to be in there doing some, like, research, and, and it's going to be very time-sensitive, right? Like, hey, the quarterly reports have to be out within the first week of the month. Um, uh, we need you to figure this out. We don't have time for CU spiking and throttling to come into play. We know that. We can predict it. You know, they're not going to do it the rest of the month, but during that week, that's really important. Same thing's true of our, our data scientists. They're going to need to go in and do all sorts of things uh, to refresh their models, to, to you know, do validations, to run their champion challenger models, to see if, you know, the current model they have is still the best model. Should they be, you know, recommending a conversion over to a new model, right? Like, data scientists will need a spike up in this time as well, and... And that's, you know, that doesn't even get to our report consumers. I mean, this is the time of, you know, uh, of month, of quarter, of year, where even people like your CEO are going to be pulling up their Power BI reports and going in to look at data and going in to look at this information, 
you know, stuff that, you know, they wouldn't do on a day-to-day basis, but they're going to do it on these like, like predictable touch points, right? Like, so all of these workloads, all these potential workloads need that ability to scale up and address challenges, right? Now, the question is, where do we want to, to do this? My contention is the primary place where we should be defining these scalable computes and, 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 and we'll get into like how we, we, we would define it, but it's at the workspace level, right? The great thing about fabric is, you know, you can buy one capacity and you could use it for all of your workloads. And that means you can have workloads that are super important uh, next to workloads that aren't super important. And you could say, hey, Chris, I want to do it on an object by object basis. I got to tell you, I think that would be very difficult to, to implement and manage. And like if I said, OK, hey, this pipeline can can use to use. I think that's too much. I think that's too difficult. Uh, I mean, the finer the grain, uh, you know, the better. But I think the proper first place where we'd want to define uh, where we could have additional CUs go in is at the workspace level. So those enterprise pipelines, those enterprise sources, those critical reports, those uh, critical, you know, you know, you know, data models, right? Those things need to be live. They need to be active, right? So you you put more CUs into that so that for bursting purposes, you know, they can get through that those ad hoc workspaces, you know, or low priority items. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe you don't want to prioritize that stuff where it's like, you know what? Uh, like, I don't know what, what, what department, but you know, they're just not as important around these things. You know, they can work within the, the available CUs, right. Um, uh, you, you know, it, you don't have that criticality. So I think it's at the workspace level is a, is a primary place where we'd want to put it. I think the next place we'd want to say is at the capacity level. So for teams and organizations that do have multiple capacities, they can have a critical capacity where they put scale on and then non-critical capacities for the like other areas. Right. Um, uh, with, with that said, you, you know, I, I think there's uh, workspace is the, is the biggest place where we'd want to define it. Um, uh, and you know, capacity being the next one where we def- where we go in, and then the last place where, where this would have any real value, scale value, would be a tenant level setting. To me, I think a tenant level setting for scalability is not super useful. If I could, I can imagine a number of situations where there are customers that say, "Yeah, we want to just be able to set a budget for all our capacities." and you know work on within that budget and then then we define one budget and you know we match that and and maybe that's the case right but i i really think the ideal place for this to be is the workspace level how now when we turn this on this needs to be a pay as you go uh type situation so that you know you know, it's not like the Power BI auto scale capabilities where you turn it on and it just charges you for 24 hours. That's BS. That's not, that's, that's hardly auto scale. That, that, no, that, no, thank you. This needs to be a pay as you go resource so that as you turn it on, it allows for you to have whatever, you know, amount of capacities you're, you set as your, your, well, as your budget, right? You should say, okay, I'm going to enable this. I'm going to allow up to whatever X number of CUs or X number of dollars in order to like uh, manage my budget at any of these given spikes. And, um, you know, we'd want to have alerts and whatnot. So, uh, you know, it needs to be pay as you go. You need to be able to set budgets on each one. Um, Ideally, we could then trace that back and put on a workspace by workspace level, potentially put it into different resource groups. So you could say, okay, HR, here's your budget, sales, here's yours, finance, here's yours, operations, there's uh, there's yours. Uh, so you could actually manage that uh, you know, differently when it comes to your scalable compute, okay? And then the last thing, I'd want to be able to like, reserve these scalable units, right? Like I'd want to know like, okay, Hey, I can at an organizational level, I've been watching how this goes. 
I'm going to plan for a 10% overage, right? Or, I don't know, 10 CUs a month is going to go into overage cap capacities. I can predict it. So I want to be able to reserve those 10 CUs and get the discount. And if I actually have a budget of 20, you know, allowing it to go up to 20, I'll pay the overage for those 20, right? So, like, I could have a discount amount and then... Uh, an amount where you pay that full extra boat for that scalability, right? Like, and I get it. Microsoft has to make uh, make make their money, and and predictable committed compute is is much easier to manage uh, than on demand scalable compute. So great, L allow for a premium. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to pay it, but I understand it, and I know that's how th these things work. So okay, fine, make that a capability, right? So. I, I think this is what we need when we, we talk about auto scale in fabric. This I kind of ran through all the reasons why. What do you think? Am I off base on this? What am I missing? Am I missing anything? Is Does this make good sense to you? I think this is exactly how this needs to work and function. I mean, I've, I've worked at Power BI for... Gosh, like a long time. I've seen so much of the compute. I've seen so much, so many ways that companies manage and work with it. Um, I, I know maybe like we want it to be free and never, you know, but that's not realistic, right? What's a realistic way for us to manage it? And I think this framework is the most realistic, understandable way to put it out there while maintaining the whole concept of like, hey, I buy a block of compute, I get a discount, it auto manages it. And then you're basically saying, I want to buy a block of compute for ex excess capacity management, right? Um, uh, I think, you know, we want to keep things as simple as possible. We don't want it to be overly complex, but I, I think the solution uh, is as complex as necessary to address 99% of consumers needs. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's, uh, you know, a subset of people out there who'd like something else, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a larger subset. Leave it, leave me a comment down below on like, what am I missing in this? I think this auto scale is, uh, something that you really want to need, but I need your help in this. So below is a link to the forum idea on this. Uh, please go and upvote this idea. Um, I, I, I think this is just something that we need to have, and I'm really hoping to get your help on this. And uh, honestly, I hope this video goes viral for like a month or two while Microsoft like accepts and acknowledges that, yes, this is what needs to be done, and then they build it out. And then hopefully no one ever watches this video again because uh, we just will have these capabilities. And But I need your help in bringing this to reality, okay? You have the best day ever. Peace. Well, and while I need your help in getting auto scale in, let me know if I can help you in something. Head over to bakertilly.com slash digital. There's a little like click, get some help items out there. Myself or one of my partners will reach out and like, we'll get a call with you. We'll, we'll hook you up and um, uh, we'll take care of you. But if you think you can do this, and I know you can, check out these two videos here. Uh, they're, they, might, they might solve a need.